Hey everybody, this is Ross, and in today's video, I just have a very interesting question that I would like to pose to you guys regarding the hardiness of fig trees. Uh, I think we really haven't scratched the surface with the information that we we know just yet. Um, the information's out there, you just have to know where to look, and the information in this article is something I've gone back to for a couple years now. I've read through this a number of times. The author is a friend of mine. His name is Sergio Carlini in Italy. And uh, he's an older gentleman. He's been growing figs his entire life. But there's a big dis the big distinction there. He's not just been growing them his entire life. He's been studying them his entire life. And I think, uh, you know, not to, to uh, take anything away from some of these guys who have been growing figs for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, but there's a big difference between somebody who's just growing them and somebody who is studying them. And there's a lot of respect to uh, the both parties there. But, uh, you know, in terms of where I place him, he's one of the most, he has some of the most profound um, and complete information out of any fig grower that uh, you can even speak to. Um, so I certainly um, am listening to have to hear what he has to say. And I think you guys should as well. So in this article, um, there's a couple points that just never really clicked in my head. I never really got it. Maybe I thought there was some kind of language barrier or translation error. But uh, the truth of the matter is, is that I just didn't get it. And uh, the first thing here that he sort of mentions that I didn't really understand is that he says the fig tree is in part a succulent plant that lives in hot desert-like zones and is programmed to store huge quantities of water in its trunk, its branches, its roots um, during the vegetative growing season. And he says, in fact, in its natural environment, rains are rare and droughts are frequent. So what this sort of means is that he's comparing a fig tree to like a cactus. And I actually sort of agree with that. If I really, if someone had said to me, are fig trees like a cactus? I would actually say, like, yeah, I would, I, I would, I would sort of agree with that, because it's not like they. I, at least I had, a, I don't have any scientific proof that they store a lot of water in their wood, but I'll tell you this: they are some of the most drought tolerant um, plants that I've ever encountered. Um, it's kind of insane. In fact, let's give you an example. If you're, if you're in the, the warmest part of your season in August, let's say, it's 100 degrees outside, and you just stop watering your figs, um, they're going to drop their leaves. At a certain point, uh, the soil is going to become very dry, and they're going to drop their leaves. The crazy thing is, is that the trees are not going to die. Now, if I did the same thing to a blueberry plant, as an example, the blueberry plant would die almost immediately. They cannot stand any sort of drought at all it seems like uh, the fig tree will not only uh, just drop its leaves but it will almost like seem like nothing had happened and if I were to uh, they kind of go through this dormancy period and they kind of just shut off and they just stop uh, for most of the summer and you can maybe trick them back into growing again um, but usually the following season, it's almost like nothing happened, is that they wake up again and they just resume the whole processes that they had done the prior season, um, which to me is not, is crazy. It's just absolutely insane. I'll give you a perfect example of how I know that this is true. I have a friend of mine who used to be really into figs. My uncle, um, my uncle's a barber. My grandfather's a barber. And this guy, believe it or not, uh, used to get his hair cut by my grandfather when he was a kid and also my uncle he still gets his hair cut every month or whatever it is by my uncle and um, one day he uh, he got divorced kind of weird tangent here but uh, he's been growing all these different varieties of figs before I even got into figs he had all these different varieties like Italian 58 Borda Sot Negra we went I actually went, did a video at his house we got to try Italian 258 and Borda Sot Negra at his house. Um, but unfortunately, he got divorced. And what had happened was that 
he got pretty much kicked out of his house and um, all of his trees were left there at the house and no one was taking care of them. The wife didn't uh, like the figs, didn't appreciate them, whatever, didn't didn't think to take care of them. I mean, you can't really blame her, right? Um, now, it was up to me. He, he sent me a text and he said, Ross, go over to the house, get the fig trees and uh, keep them. And then that way you can have them and whenever I get my life back together, uh, I can take them back from you. Just take care of them for me. So I went over there and to my surprise, the soil was obviously completely dry and the trees were alive. And I was just shocked. I said to him, well, I'm gonna go over there. I'll see what the deal is, but don't you think they'll be dead? And uh, his intuition said no. And um, I brought them back. This was after them being neglected for probably close to two months of no water, just the rain. Um, and it wasn't necessarily the, the wettest year. And it was at the warmest time of the year. So uh, I was shocked to see these things alive. I brought them back to the house. I watered them in well. They didn't grow uh, even a little bit um, until the following season. They didn't grow one little bit. And they resumed growth. And actually, the Italian 258 tree that I got from his house um, is the current Italian 258 tree that I have. And I think even that year... It put out probably 50 or so fruits the, the following year after going through that crazy ordeal of dropping all of its leaves and uh, going through this craziness. So, um, yeah, I would just – I'm not totally shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if someone told me that they're actually sort of like a succulent or a cacti or cactus and they store a lot of water in their trunks. And it makes – it just makes tons of sense that this would be true. And um, he says also that uh, this is a really important line here in the article. Uh, the accumulation of substances in reserve inside its wood and roots, resin and carbohydrates, that's the accumulation of substances, is due to the metabolism of the plant by light and heat. And we talk a lot about on this channel maximizing the amount of heat and maximizing the amount of light that you have. Putting a fig tree, especially in a really cold area, putting it in the warmest spot and the sunniest spot. Um, now he goes on to say there's an area here, what I was very confused about for years. Uh, and um, let's see here. He's kind of still talking about the original habitat. They like very well-drained soils that are sunny, hot, and arid. They like rocks and hills, free-draining soil, a lot of heat rather than a very rich cold soil which is exactly what i have and most of the people in the northeast have is a very rich clay heavy damp cold soil um, the neighboring rocks reflect the heat uh, important point here is that the grass around the plant is non-existent and then the soil is therefore dry and burned by the sun there's a good amount of evaporation that occurs after a morning dew. Uh, at the end of the summer when the fruits are ripe, they have very little water at their disposal and therefore they're very sweet. This is an absolute fact. Everything he says so far is pretty much a fact. Uh, you can't debate this in one little bit. In fact, it's been known for quite some time, even if you talk to people in the Middle East, they have a specific word for figs that were grown out in the wild versus figs that were grown commercially they have two they call them by different names when they sell them at grocery markets depending on where you go and everybody knows in the middle east or at least at the, these markets they know that the fig that was picked from the wild is going to be tastier than the fig that was picked grown commercially because they uh in the wild they're not getting the water in a commercial setting they're irrigating their trees and therefore uh, they're not as tasty. So then he says um, the wood is very dehydrated. Here's the really, really important point that I want to make. The wood is very dehydrated as the long, hot, and bright summer concentrates the antifreeze substances 
which is the resin and the starch, the carbohydrates. So this is basically the sap within the tree. So between the heat and the sunlight, that increases the metabolism of the tree. That's what we talk about this, getting the metabolism as as best, running as best we can, getting that car to run the best we can is giving it the right amount of heat and the right amount of sunlight. Uh, once that occurs, the tree concentrates, he says, the, the resin and the carbohydrates, the sugars within the tree, making it lose the herbaceous consistency and allowing it to take on a dry appearance. Okay, remember this, a dry appearance. In this state, the plant resists cold temperatures 10 to 12 degrees Celsius lower than the herbaceous structure. Now, if I go back up here, he mentions uh, what this means is that there's, the fig tree is a mixed constitution, herbaceous and woody is what he calls them. So he's talking about here, basically I think the uh, the herbaceous structure is when the tree is actively growing. The wood hasn't hardened up. It's very pliable. It's very weak. And it's filled with sap. Um, he says here, this structure can be observed in the spring when the new branches appear. They're gorged with uh, lymph, and he says lymph is the milky liquid, which is the sap. He says it's rich in water, carbohydrates, accumulated substances that, with the exception of water, make an excellent antifreeze. So basically, what he's trying to say is that when we make it lose the herbaceous consistency by subtracting out that water, we give the wood the best natural antifreeze and it the wood will take on a dry appearance and I have always again been so confused by that sentence and I'm sure a lot of you guys are but here's a really good example of what I'm talking about so I went out because I know that some of my trees this year actually have this very uh, dry appearance to them and I've noticed it throughout my time growing figs. Some trees, for whatever reason, just seem to have a more dry appearance on them. When I take some fig cuttings in the fall, I've even noted in the video that we did, um, talking about how to prepare the, the, uh, the cuttings when you receive them. On all my fig bid listings, I did a video. There's a link to that that shows you guys how what to do when you receive them. I said you should clean them, you know, label them, do all kinds of different things. One of the points I made was that some of the cuttings that you guys are going to receive this winter are going to have this dry appearance to them. And this dry appearance is not because the wood is dry in the sense that it's not going to have its not enough moisture for it to root that maybe it lost all of its moisture and the cutting is dead. Um, quite the opposite in that it's actually quite healthy and it may look to be dry, but apparently according to Sergio in his article, this is the dry appearance that he is referring to. When the tree reaches and concentrates its antifree substances to then be able to handle a 10 to 12 degree Celsius lower temperature which is insane and I'll tell you this I don't see this dry appearance on all of my trees but I did see this quite a bit on a lot of my potted trees okay and here's me in the greenhouse today I took these photos you can see this is the dried appearance where people this is literally on my trees right now this isn't like I took the cutting I put it in storage for two months and sitting in my fridge and it got dry or something you know, this is legitimately just what the branches look like. Um, so when it gets this appearance, he's saying it can handle a much lower temperature. Now, how do we get this appearance again? How do we get our branches to look like this? 
by the fall. Well, I knew, I had a hunch. I wasn't entirely sure why this was happening on some of my trees and I didn't really want to go into it because I didn't really think it really mattered all that much. But this is a testament here on a lot of my trees that have this dry appearance that I am not over watering my figs and then I'm getting higher fruit quality as he mentions in the article I because I have less water and at a certain time of the season first off our fall was very dry this year if you guys recall we had an extremely dry fall in the in the uh, in the Northeast um, so much so that I I had to actually water my fig trees um, and this was really good we talked about the lignification process and what that means because we don't have so much water our trees are not going to keep growing and growing and we're going to actually have good lignification this year and I said to a lot of you guys even when I took these cuttings I was like wow these are probably the best quality cuttings I've ever had I've ever offered to you guys because they had lignified so so well every single potted tree that I had had completely lignified because it was dry in the fall because I had controlled the water extremely well my friend fruit nut will tell you this just right off the bat is that he talks about lignification every year we hear about this on rfigs.com we hear about how people are talking about oh will my branches lignify in time what can I do to lignify my branches you know my branches are green why aren't they turning brown you know um, and fruit nut is always the first one to say you have to stop the water and the fertilizer three months in advance before you want them to lignify so for me that's sometime in august i obviously i stop all fertilizer by june june 1st completely done all fertilizer but the water i've almost completely stopped as well and it's just enough to get them to hold on to their fruits and ripen those fruits and that's it and if you remember we even put our trash bags on top of our pots to keep all that excess water out to 100% control the water uh, getting into the pots this year. So it worked in incredibly well. And now I have a lot of these figs here that have this appearance to them. A lot of my branches looked like this this year. And um, this is obviously what you have to do. Now, here's the issue with me in this climate or anyone else in this climate, anyone else in this soil because first off, we don't normally have such a dry fall. Okay, it normally rains quite a bit. And <clears throat> we may never get them to look like this. In fact, a lot of my in-ground trees, I don't really recall. And it's not like I can go out there and look right now because I cut them all back. But I don't think a lot of them had this appearance to them. And it's not like I'm feeding them anything, and it's not like I'm watering them. I don't water them. I don't water anything in the ground here, regardless if it's a fig or not. But if you sort of think about this, um, <clears throat> it's a little crazy because I don't even know if this is possible to achieve here in the ground. Um, and I've been kind of contemplating and really starting to think hard about this this wood here and this appearance and what this could potentially mean. I mean, that's really the question that I wanted to pose to you guys. If my branches have this appearance to them, if I can control the water in ground, if I can really limit the water that these in-ground trees receive, will my fig trees look like this by the end of my season? And will they be able to withstand zero degrees Fahrenheit or five degrees Fahrenheit or the temperature that is mentioned in this article, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius lower than normal? And I think that's a big reason why I have struggled so much here. So what I've done, without really paying attention to, to this dry appearance of the wood, is that I've gone to crazy lengths, as some of you guys know. And I've really spent a lot of time in the spring, if I can find myself a spring photo here, of me planting out these fig trees in mounds. 
and you can see here's the planting that we did um, last spring and how everything is in a mound you can see here uh, it's still all very clay on top of the mounds is one layer of rock I tried to create as high of a mound as I could ideally it should be a foot high um, as he mentions Sergio in this uh, this article here what can you be done because it's it's not like I said in this climate um, you can't modify the climate right so here's a couple of things he mentions avoid planting a fig where there's a lot of water um, if the plant stays in a human environment it will continue to gorge itself with water it is then mandatory to select arid or at least very well drained locations consequently it is evident that hills are sloping land are the ideal site so we have here obviously a very heavy soil it's not very well draining it's unfortunate it's the best I could do but we are on a slope we're on a south facing slope it's very sunny here we get a lot of heat and the water goes down from the house here all the way down this way and drains off so that's pretty decent um, he says here that the sloping land are ideal sites. Basically, a deep draining system is fundamental. It's also possible to create a big mound of pebbles, compost, and slightly enriched garden soil. The fig tree should be planted on the south and sunny side of the mound. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. I would say just being inside the mound is good enough. I don't know why you'd want to plant it on the south side of the mound. You know, I'm sort of confused there. He says... Um, Around the plant, the soil must be bare, weeded, and well hoed. Um, there can be grass, but it must be mown, as otherwise it retains humidity below the grass. Um, the ground is always staying humid, and this may only be visible with morning dews. Um, so I'm always like of the mindset here that maybe it's almost a good idea to not have some of these rocks because the rocks are sort of acting like grass and it's preserving that moisture that we don't want um, maybe I don't want to change my tune with the way that I'm doing it right now um, but if I were doing this in a full-on outdoor setting um, a full-on like um, hardiness trial I would probably just leave it with bare ground, no mulch, no grass, no weeds, and that way we can have as much evaporation of water out of the soil as possible. Um, you know, in terms of the mound, super key. Maybe it'd be better if I could mix in soil with these rocks as well to give, give a better drainage to it. Maybe I should come in here and mix all this up you know, uh, really kind of maybe add a little bit of more well draining something to this to help with the drainage, maybe even build up the mounds even higher, include a lot of these, uh, these cinder blocks here, even within the mounds. That's in a sense, even what Herman does in New Jersey. For those of you who don't know who Herman is, he has been growing figs in New Jersey, only 20 minutes away from me in the ground for over 15 years um, very successfully and we've always wondered how the heck he did it we don't know how we don't understand it we never really fully understand it but this article really makes it quite obvious in everything that we should be doing is not watering them not feeding them planting them in a location that's well draining on a slope you know good soil that's well draining in the most amount of sunlight with the most amount of heat that you can possibly give it and if all that really adds up you do every single thing right there you will end up basically getting these trees with a drier appearance to them that can then take lower than normal temperatures and wouldn't that be nice so I have a feeling I won't know the answer to this question for quite some time. It's unfortunate. Um, 
But I am kind of very confident that this is the answer to the question that I don't really necessarily need to um, be saying to myself, oh, this can't be it. Um, you know, it makes a whole lot of sense to me, every little point that he made. Um, I wonder, though, what this dry appearance really means. Um, if that really is indeed true and what we're aiming for with all these fig trees. And if that is indeed possible here, that's the real question in my mind is whether or not this is going to be a good thing, but whether or not this is possible. So I hope this was a, a nice eye-opening discussion for you guys. I want to thank everybody here for watching. I'll put this link down in the, in the description of the video. We'll talk to everybody soon. All right, check us out on Fig Boss. That's our blog. Facebook and Instagram, and we will see everybody soon. Catch you later, guys.